Oh. No, but not for, I kiss him on the neck. Uh, what? <laughs> what is going on? I wanted to ask about 14, cause like I've been pretty surprised by 14. Oh. the whole thing with like Drew and all of these things. Like what happened there with Claire? What's going on? I mean, who knows? Um, no, it's uh, Claire's whole um, story this year has been, has definitely been about exploring, I guess, uh, and kind of losing her way, but I think that's important for everyone. I think you have to have some time in your teenage life where you yeah. lose your way. Um, and she's just figuring out what is important to her and who's important to her and what's next. Well, I also feel like Drew's a bit of the bad guy, right? He's like the one that, you know, like the bad boy who comes into class and you're just like, oh, I don't want to be attracted to you, but I kind of am. <laughs> I kind of saw that with them. Like, do you feel like Claire was also just kind of... Yeah, I think... <laughs> I think he is very different from Eli, which makes him enticing in that way. And I also think it's uh, what came up in the story, too, is that he's there. They're yeah. spending all their time together. Yeah. And when you spend that much time with someone, it's easy to see what's likable about yeah. them and, and what it would be like if you were in a relationship. And I think it's very easy to, to fall for someone who's with you all the time, especially when your significant other is in a different city entirely. Yeah, that long distance. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because, you know, Drew's so lovable, but yet you're always simultaneously campaigning for E. Claire. Yeah. You always are. Like, yeah. I, I have to tell you, when, like, for a second we thought it was, this just sounds like so Barbara Walter. For a second, when I thought it was, like, Drew's baby, I was a little sad because I was like, it's got to oh, be, yeah. you know, it's got to be. And so I was kind of relieved when the truth came out. But what do you think it is that it, like, makes, you know, Eli and Claire, like, such a standout couple for Degrassi? Because there's been so many couples, but they've been, like, such a famous couple. Yeah. I know. I I was saying this earlier that if if Monroe and I knew what made E. Claire special, we would tell everybody. Like I, it's not something I'm trying to keep secret. I have no idea what works with us. What is the secret to love? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I don't. I have no idea what it is about those two. I mean, there are certain things that I can pinpoint, but I don't know if it's if it's just like a mix of all those things or if it's one particular thing out of all those it's just somehow it works and i mean we both feel very lucky that it worked the way it did um but yeah eclair is just some sort of magical eclair is a delight <laughs> it's just a delight it is I mean, as I, sweet as its dessert counterpart it really is <laughs> and you know i al i often think that like i feel like the way it works on tv sometimes that if you have like really good chemistry with an actor mm -hmm the writers see it and they start to write more and more for you, you know, like would you, how would you describe you and Monroe's chemistry? <laughs> um, I would describe it a little bit more um, familial in real life than on screen. I mean, we still have that, um, the dynamic that you sort of see in Eli and Claire at the beginning of the relationship is sort of what we have in real life, just minus maybe the romance part. We just antagonize each other a little bit. Yeah, and minus the hearse. Okay. Um, yeah, but it's just, I think, I feel grateful that we had history before we started the show together, because, yeah. or before he came onto the show, because I think that really played a part in our relationship. There was, you know, that feeling as actors, like we've worked together before, and, you know, having grown up a little bit, but sharing the screen again was, was fun. I couldn't have asked for a better scene partner. Well, Monroe was actually, I see, I didn't know that you guys had met before, like, mm. he was 13, you were 10. Yeah. And, uh, he was saying that... You didn't like him the very first time you met him. Okay, this is untrue. <laughs> this he is what has, he said, the late of He has taken my longer statement and shortened it down to one part. What I wanted as a 10-year-old... He's, like, he's like the paparazzi, you know? He's like changing the truth. <laughs> but come on, he was Tabloid. like this like fun 13-year-old boy, and I was like this little 10-year-old girl, and all I wanted was his validation. I wanted him to like take me under his wing and like... Show you the world. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought he was like super cool, but he wouldn't hang out with me because I was weaker and still am, but you know. No, it's because teenagers, <laughs> when they hit teenagers, like, no, I've not. made it, you know? And they forget all the people before them, yeah. you know? All the I people mean, that helped them get there. I'm a teenager <laughs> now, you know? Yeah, I mean, that, and that's classic in all kids. You always want to hang out with the kid who's older than totally. you, but you don't want to hang out with the younger one. So I was like an annoying little sister to him. That's so and, cute, be, But because he wouldn't hang out with him, me, I became like, I resented him for it. Yeah. And then, so that's where the hated him thing came from. But it was. Hated in a loving yeah, way. Yeah, that's kind of like the, when you were saying like the family dynamic yeah, that you guys exactly. feel. Yeah, exactly. We do definitely 
definitely have like an older brother, younger sister thing because I just bother him about things and he'll bother me about things and it's, yeah, it somehow it works on camera. Because that's also the thing, I always get asked what it's like to kiss Monroe and kiss Luke and I'm like, you don't... That's so weird, I was just about to ask you. I knew you were, yeah, because it comes up all the time. But the thing is, it's different. It just yeah. is different on set because you don't have the intimacy or the buildup or anything that goes along with what actually makes a kiss great. Mm -hmm. Like when you take away all the emotional shit, it's just two people like putting their lips on each other. And True. that's kind of gross when yeah. you get down to yeah, it. Yeah. So like doing that over and over again on a day, I mean, I'm not saying it was bad, <laughs> but I'm also not saying that it was like the best moment of my life. It's just, it just happens. And I don't know, like now I'll say that it's comfortable. It's comfortable to kiss them because I've done it so many times. Yeah. All right, in less like romantic relationships, I really mm -hmm. like uh, Allie and Claire's relationship. Yeah. You know, because you need your girlfriends in high yeah. school. And, you know, aside from whatever that camping scenario was at like Jake's cottage, like they were pretty strong. Yeah. Like I know. they've consistently been together. So, like, what does that say? I mean, like, being in high school, do you need your, you know, rock girlfriend? Like, what's the dynamic about Allie and Claire? Allie and Claire are great twosome because they really do just support each other. There have been certain moments where it's almost felt in the story that they've been trying to, the writers have been trying to set us up for some sort of big, like, girlfriend showdown, and then it never happens. It's like any kind of energy that they try to build up, they're like, eh, this just doesn't work. Like, yeah. they're friends, they just are. And no matter what dumb choices or stupid things they say to each other, they always come back and apologize. They never turn it into some big argument, which I think is what friendship's all about. Yeah. I think I really hate the societal norm of like girl on girl fight. And well, I was gonna ask you about that because yeah, you so often see all these cat fights. Exactly. And especially like in reality television, it's just all about girls fighting with each other. And it's all about competition, which yeah. I think it just it's so odd to me that we put it in girls' minds that we're each other's competition. Mm -hmm. Professionally and romantically, like if a guy likes another girl, you have to destroy that girl as yeah. opposed to just acknowledge that that guy either doesn't see how awesome you are or yeah. just genuinely has feelings for someone else. Totally. Like there's, it's so much bigger than like each other. And also in this business too, as an actor, you see so many girls will be catty with other girls. And I'm so happy about the trend right now that's going on with like female celebrities when they're being sort of coaxed into saying something rude about someone else, yeah. they know. They're like, no, I, I genuinely like this person just because yeah. we're in the same category work-wise doesn't I, mean I'm gonna hate them. And I think there can be healthy competition, right? Because yeah. you are gonna go up for roles with people who are your friends um, and you want each other to succeed. Of course you want the role as well, but there's that healthy competition where it's like, good yeah. game, glad you got it. Exactly. Sucks that I did it, but it but does, if it's, it's not it's gonna not be me, I'd rather be someone I know. Yes. And that has been a, a huge, um, learning curve for me. I think, I mean, I never necessarily felt competitive to the point where I hated one of my friends, but it, I always had a feeling in the back of my mind that it's like, if someone else is succeeding, it means I'm failing. Yeah. And I have in the last couple of years really let that go. And I can't even tell you how much it's changed my life. So it's made even. things so much easier, yeah. but it's, and it's also so much easier to be happy for my friends. And that's the best feeling to be happy for other people booking other work. Yeah. And I mean, it can be hard on your own ego when you're not booking work, but you might as well use the rest of your energy to be happy for other people. The characters on Degrassi have given a voice to so many different kinds of young people and for uh, everybody who's going through these different issues. But like, could you, do you think you can say that Degrassi is a specific voice for young women? You know, mm. what voice would that be? I've often thought about that, that there is an emphasis on strong, female characters um, who are often at the helm of the show, <coughs> um, you know, starting with Emma, Miriam, yeah. and, um, you know, the Emma and Manny friendship was really at the core of, like, the early years, and I think there is something to be said for the, for that. I think it's, it's amazing that we have these strong female team characters, uh, and that all comes from our, like, our leader, our, you know, our mother hen. Uh, Linda Schuyler, she, she really, she's a strong woman who then decided that that's, that should be reflected in the television we make and, and it's funny, you see that in our audiences too, we're, we have a majority audience of young girls, 
but I don't think that that's because it's gossipy or it's about the hot boys. I do think it's because there are strong female characters that girls see themselves in and want to be those people, or at least see the, the strength and want to emulate that and be that person. Um, and I, I do think that's a great part of our show. Are there similarities between yourself and Claire? Like, are there parts of the role where it's easier to fall into than others? Um, I think, I do say that Claire is very different from me, and I, I do still stand by that. There are spots where we, um, where we do match up, like, um, compassion. I like to think of myself as a pretty compassionate friend, and, and I think that heart sort of matches up, but, uh, in a lot of ways she is very different. Um, but I certainly try to learn from her, um, in aspects of particularly confidence. She is such a confident bitch. Like, oh, yes. I love it. <laughs> and I don't have that in real life. I'm really not, I'm not someone, I don't know. Like, I don't think of myself as confident anyway. I've found, especially recently, that people send me messages on Twitter and stuff and say, I just love that you're so comfortable in your own skin and you like are super confident and I want to be like you. And I think, I'm not like that, but I mean, be that person. Don't, just because I'm not that person, don't try not to be. Um, I, but it's great that you're getting that from me because I'm definitely hella insecure and like not comfortable in my own skin. Those things are, those things are hard to come by. So I'm, you know, I'm not going, I'm not hard on myself about that, but yeah. I know that Claire is definitely more that way. She is way more comfortable and confident and I, I try to channel her whenever I have to do something that involves me seeming confident. Well, it's lovely when you can like actually learn from a character that you play. Yeah. Like you can actually learn something. I mean, yeah. I felt that a lot playing my character throughout the years. I mean, like, just taught me pretty much everything about coming out, but mm -hmm. to learn something positive uh, while you're playing a character is just seems yeah. like such a double win, you know? Like, they bring you things as much as you, you know, bring it to them. Yeah. Did you really feel that, though, that, like, you I, learned about coming out through the I show? did, because Mark was always a step ahead of me, so it kind of was like, a guide. Yeah. In many ways, it's, you know, Linda Schuyler and the writers really taught me in many ways that they taught, I guess, the fans that were watching mm -hmm. what it meant to come out and, and be a young gay person in high school at that time in 2002 and, yeah. and like, what was going to come at curve. me. Yeah. yeah, I think they really warned me as what could come at me. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was something that I would have never learned in the classroom, you know? Yeah. So, grateful for that experience, but it seems like you have the same, you know, when you see Claire in these scenarios where she's so confident, you think, oh gosh, you know, you want to be... At least you know. At least you know that that's something that can happen. And that's a way to handle a specific situation. All right, so I want to see how well you know Claire Edwards. Oh my god, okay. okay. This could be really um, interesting. So it's actually a, a scenario. I, and I, it's funny because I, I, I watched this episode pretty recently. So Claire, in season 10, Claire gets laser eye surgery. Oh yeah. <laughs> what does Jenna mistake in that surgery for? She thinks she's got a boob job. That's <laughs> obvious. That one is obvious. A boob job. That's kind of my favorite storyline because it's, it's just so, so random. What? It is so random. Why is Jenna running around saying she got a boob job? I know. And the fact that it even becomes a thing. I, that storyline, I remember thinking it was so hilarious. But, um, yeah. You I, guys are so good at the trivia. I thought I could stump you guys no. way more, but you guys are so good. See, I mean, I think I have a pretty good memory of the stuff that goes on with my own character. I, Because I, in a weird way, I lived it. Yeah, yeah. And that is also iconic because Spencer had to like touch my boobs. Like that was the thing so that true. happened. <laughs> it was like, and that was real. Do you have a maybe a Claire trivia for me? Can you stop me? Mm -hmm. um, how many guys has Claire <laughs> kissed? <laughs> you know? I okay. Can, at least I can count them. Shoot, I don't remember the years. You know when you were Darcy's sister kind of years. I didn't make out with anyone when I was 11. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so then I can do this. Right, so there's obviously Eli. There's obviously Drew. There's obviously Jake. Yeah. Did you kiss that little gay character that you went to prom just to make Eli jealous? I'm sick, by the way, the amount that I know. <laughs> um, no, I don't think you kissed him. I keep saying you, Claire, my apologies. Well, I mean, I did kiss her. <clears throat> yes, yeah, technically that's true. For her work. So that's I got paid. three. Could there be more than three? Yes. There is? Mm-hmm. What 
other boys. Wow, Claire really got around. I know. Jeez. Oh, she knows. <laughs> Krista knows. Hold on, just give me one more second. One more second. You've kissed somebody else. Oh, oh, Dallas kisses you. When yes, drinking, there's that. Yeah, kisses Claire when she's drinking I beer. I actually forgot about that one, but yeah. Okay, so that that's was four. Funny that was very funny. I love that one. Um, there's one. Oh, uh, oh, um, oh, <laughs> oh, uh, when you're writing, uh, when Claire is writing for the insider? Yes. Uh, Asher? Yes, that is it. That's five. Non consensual kiss. Yeah. Yes. Not consensual, but we're including those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Okay, so that's five. There's one more boy I'm missing. Do you like this? Did Claire like this oh, boy? There's two more you're missing. Two. One of them I liked, the other one I didn't really care about. How, do you, how did you have all this time to graduate? <laughs> Who knows? You know, run for like student council? Run for student council, get cancer, get pregnant, oh all these God, things. There's, a, there's two more boys? One earlier. The first one's before. iconic though. The first one was my first on screen case. He, I don't think he's gotten it. Oh, are you watching backwards? Yes, I'm watching backwards. Is this in season nine? Eight. Oh, I don't know eight. I don't know eight. Like, I, I've seen it, but I'm not really up to date. Mm. So who was it? Casey. You kissed Casey? Yeah, that's my arc for season eight. Is oh. the fact that he has a crush on me and I do too, but I just won't admit it. And then in the last episode, we kiss. Oh, is this, why, nine, this is why Jed is no. jealous and spreads rumors about your boot job? Um, season nine, then she gets, she... Uh, Casey cheats on me with Jenna, and then Jenna gets pregnant uh, and has a baby. And yeah. Guys, don't go to Degrassi. <laughs> Just never go to that school. So there's one more guy I'm missing. Yeah, it was a really random one. This is the one that I thought would stump you. Really random. Um, it's in season ten though. Is. Wait, am I missing another is there a one? D? No. Don't you kiss oh. Seven? No, but not for. I kiss him on the neck. Uh, what? <laughs> What is going on? <laughs> yeah, um, that was season nine, the one where I magically turn into a vampire. Um, it's for a dream sequence. It was so <gasps> random. <laughs> you kissed Mr. Simpson, didn't you? Yeah. That's oh my it. god, it's true. That was Dude. a dream sequence. And then there's another one, though. There's what? still another kid that I'm like leaving out. At I had the craziest dreams. The writers just decided that Claire had a really active dream life because we filmed a so very many of my active dreams. dream life. No. One of the like craziest things I've ever done on the show was when in season nine, I had that storyline where I was like reading vampire books and then got a crush on Declan. So I have this dream where I'm a freaking vampire. They got teeth made for me and contacts. And then I kiss Declan like in the dream. And then I kiss his neck in real life because I'm like apparently fantasizing so hard. I forget where I am. And yeah, it's like I Claire's dream Claire's been getting a bit crazy. frisky, eh? Yeah. Excuse me, but there is one more guy and the I missed. The final one is this kid Liam Would because I went that. on a date with him in season 11. What? Maybe to make Jake Wait. jealous. No, isn't it's a movie date night. Oh. Oh, uh, yes, because he didn't ask you to movie night. Yeah, so I take this random kid True. again. Just but like you, season 12. But you knew which one that I thought maybe, you know, when like you went to prom with someone else and yeah. Eli shows up on like a horse Yeah, no, I didn't kiss him. No, I didn't kiss him. Wow. Wow. One of the only guys I had. Wow. Missed. It was up until this point I thought Claire was very pure, but apparently not. All right, Monroe Chambers. Yes, sir. How's it going? Oh, it's good. Yeah, is it good to like hang out with everybody here that you haven't seen in a while? Yeah, no, it's good. I haven't seen a, a couple of these guys in a long, long time. But I mean, like, obviously you're in 14. Well, here's the thing about 14. Mm -hmm. Eli, like, never really leaves. But technically he's in university, but he's, like, coming back. That's right. Yeah, he, he's graduated now twice, technically. Like, he, he graduated, then they're like, okay, come back for a little bit, where I basically just Skyped the whole season. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then, then they brought me back for the final season, basically, to wrap up Eclair. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that was nice. Thanks for bringing me back. Thanks for the work. Hey, don't thank me. Thank Linda. Hey, Linda. Thanks, Linda. Scott. Thank you. Um, e. Claire. Okay, do you know what ship is? I do know. I know what shipping is I was, because I was, of Claire. Yeah, I was told about that. Yeah, like Krista taught me. Krista taught you? Yeah, she was like, this is a ship. And I was like, what? <laughs> like one that sails? She's like, no, like when you mix the names. So yeah. I feel really hip and with it right now. So nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop E. Claire like I know what that, perfect. like I knew what that was at the yeah. beginning. Um, e. Claire. E. Claire was like standout couple. Don't you think? I honestly, it surprised me 
as much as Aislinn did. It was kind of funny how it all kind of happened. Fans really do, I think, like the couple, and we don't understand why. Yeah. They're so dysfunctional, and they're so crazy, but in a great way. They're crazy for love, they're crazy for each other, and they're really entertaining in that way, but we've been with them for so long that we just go, like, like we just facepalm at some of the stuff they do because we know Yeah, are so you well. reading it being like, again, now, again, yeah, what Eli, now? relax. Player. Because it was from like 10 to 14. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a long yeah. time. I love the way your character's introduced. Oh, uh, with the hearse? It's so cool. The hearse. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just like shows up with a hearse and eyeliner, like that's the way things are. That's who he is, yeah, yeah. But I have a question that has been plaguing me for many, many years now. Where the hell does one get a hearse? How did he have one? This is the question of the day. I don't know. I know the actual hearse is from Newfoundland. <laughs> I know that. You know the history of the hearse. I know the history of the hearse. I know it's a 69. <laughs> I know it's from Newfoundland. But I don't know how he got it. I have no idea. It's kind of, I always put it two and two together, like a creepy backstory, because his ex-girlfriend died. Yeah. Uh, hit by a car. So I like so to like think that drive the hearse. hearse. <laughs> and then just raced and away. Then raced it out of there. He's like, okay, bye, baby. I love you. And then like, took it back because I need to ride home. <laughs> I need to get home. It's raining. Sorry, babe. I'm not gonna walk home in the rain. I'm not just some scrub. Just like, I just dropped you off. Yeah, I just dropped you off. Bye, baby. So I'll see you in the afternoon. Well, because I tried to solve it too. I was like, hey, bullfrog, and I'm like, no. He's like a DJ. He's a, DJ. He's a disc jock, whatever. Um, or DJ, 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 DJ. No DJ. DJ. I think DJ. Um, so maybe like, what was Eli's mom? Like maybe she was like a CC, mortician. You don't know. Something. Maybe he's a mortician. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Or maybe he worked at a funeral home. Truth. And maybe he, this could like, be something Eli would so do. I wrote a poem beside that. I wrote a poem, yeah, exactly. I wrote the short play. <laughs> it's like short film play. It's about like life and like, death. It's about like 14 corpses that just stay there. It's like a blooming flower that's on fire. <laughs> it's just burning. I mean, that's why I kind of loved it though. But yeah. I think that's why like Eclair was so nuts because they were both like really dramatic and artistic. And Their personalities are so bold and so in your face yeah. and so opinionated that they were kind of like these two trains and they're either going to crash and burn <clears throat> or they were going to make something like a beautiful piece of art yeah, yeah, yeah. that is just like this wrecked piece of metal because that's what they were they had all these sharp edges and like just horrible things happen to each other that they would do to each other maliciously and intend to, like intend to do it but they loved each other so much it was all out of love well i think they just always wanted each other's attention which is why they kept doing that you know it's like True. look at me look at me well everybody of course loves you claire but like you kind of were you know well not were you are um, like the heartthrob of that couple. Like, does that like <laughs> make you feel weird? Yeah, yeah. it's very strange to me. I when the girls say like, it, oh my god, Eli. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't agree. I, like, not that I don't agree. Like, I can uh, sure, like, thank you, I appreciate it, but I don't. I never could wrap my head around it. Like, me, little old me, little old me. Little old me. Oh, I think I think you're very handsome. No, it's it was it was very flattering, kind of cool that way because I was never that guy in high school and I was never that person yeah. so for people to well, think that it was kind of funny it is weird right because it's so funny when you see yourself one way and then everybody sees it differently because they see it as the character right um, and also we're given a lot of help when we're on camera you know yeah got, thank like, you. you know we got some eight hours up yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I feel this I mean I was in no way felt like the heartthrob of and you, you were in your own right though Where well I guess because I was like I was the only gay kid, so I guess I'd be like the right. gay. But no, I never felt. I mean, I know what it is. It's just like a really bizarre feeling. Are you like quite studly, Adama? Thank, thank you. Quite studly. Thank you. That's kind of what I tell myself to pick myself up. <laughs> you look yourself in the mirror. Get out there, stud. Stud. I mean, I don't have your calves, but I'm doing my best I can. <laughs> yeah. This is what I found. I was always closest to the people on set that I had all my scenes with. Right. Because we spend all the time together. Yeah. So, like, what's you and Aislinn's like relationship like? Same way as that way. We're kind of like this brother and sister kind of vibe because we played that once before but we were both very we cared very much about our characters and we wanted to make sure we did respect to them and when they were together we wanted to make sure it was the best for them but yeah. we were great we have a great relationship I think it's really we have a very creative relationship and professional relationship on, relationship nice. on set but offset we can talk about you know the world politics and yeah. like just have fun together it was never uh, too awkward which is because going through those kind of intimate scenarios and yeah. getting really deep emotionally with people sometimes it can be awkward and off throwing but it was good. Yeah, like imagine being in like a couple for four years of the character with somebody you don't like. Right. You know, I think yeah. that really affects it. And I realized like, you know, you guys had such great chemistry. And I think, of course, that inspires the writers and inspires the characters. 
It's awesome that they tell to you spend to time on to spend time on those characters. Yeah. Right. Um, well, she'll probably tell you when you the interview here. She hated me at first. Yeah, she despised you at first. She didn't like me. She I mean, I can totally me. understand that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a pretty disliked person. Like, I'm, I'm Why did she not like you? Why? What I happened? Know, it, at first, it was when we worked together. When we were, uh, she was ten, I was thirteen. Uh, she, we just did the interview, and she was talking about what it. We, we did a uh, movie called Murder in the Hamptons. We okay. played twins, which is pretty hilarious. That's hysterical. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, she. I think a part of it was that she was an only child, and then she said that she thought I was awesome, but I wouldn't give her the time of day. Like I wouldn't like because she was younger. I was thirteen. I see. I didn't and you were see like, her. I run things. I don't. Have I to am. I am the runner. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Singapore. <laughs> uh, no, I would. No, I. I don't. I didn't think it that way at all. But it was kind of funny to hear her say like, Yeah, I did not like you. You were annoying. And I was, I was, I was like, Oh. <laughs> I love how like as a ten year old, thirteen's like. Yeah, you know, what's up, what's up, I'm the coolest guy in the room. Yeah, 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 I'm the coolest guy here. Yeah. That's a third but it's also cool with a lot, like, do you watch back, look back on the show and see how, like, just to see you grow up? Like, it's weird to see you as a kid, yourself as a, as a child. Well, number one, I hate watching myself on camera. It's the worst thing in the world. Really? In a room, that's torture for me. Um, so I only watch stuff in my own room. Like, I don't like watching with other premieres. People. No, I don't. I, yeah. I can't do it. Like, my yeah. father can't watch with you with me yeah because i'm just overcritical like yeah. as we are as actors you just get over critical perfectionist and you start editing yourself there so it's not good but um 100 when i joined degrassi i was older right so i didn't join so how I old were you when i was 19 when i joined oh really? so i was playing a 15 year old at that time i'm still oh. playing a 15 year old because i look like a baby yeah so i joined when i was older um because i look so young and so it was different for me 19? i was 19 when i joined. on that when you walked out of a hearse with that's eyeliner right. you were 19. that's right Wow, good genes. Yeah, yeah you see, like, my father, he's, he's, he, he's like 61 now, but he's, he looks like he's 50. <laughs> <laughs> he's 61, but he looks like he's 57. It's good genes. Uh, that's actually really impressive, though, because then you were really young starting, but you had, like, a lot of heavy content for, like, or no, Eli is really young, and you were, it was great that it worked out that you were older than your character, because you had a lot of heavy content. Maybe that yeah. helped you, right? Because you're going in there immediately playing a character with bipolar disorder. Right. Well, see, I no, no, that's the thing. It wasn't. Everyone thought that that was the beginning part. Yeah, at first, he was OCD. He was oh, a hoarder. Yeah, at was first, he was just this rebellious. Because that was about his ex-girlfriend who had passed away. And... Exactly. So for like an episode or two, that was his main stuff. Yeah. That, that's what they thought it was. And then it turned out to be manic depressive and bipolar. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, no, he was great. I think it did benefit me um, just to kind of be a little older and bring... Uh, I have no by any means mature, but maturity to it. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Like I think it was a learning curve for me because I had never at, at before then I'd never tackled disorders before, and so when they were giving me that opportunity when they throw that at me, I was I felt absolutely blessed. I was like perfect. I had to sink my teeth into this, but I learned the love of disorders. Like I love performing that, so I got to do it once on a show called Cracked. I got to play Tourette's. And got to do a couple other things, which is a lot of fun. For so me. then, like, how did you prepare for it? Did you like go in and research for these? You know, yeah, like different conditions and how they could, how they're manifested. How they yeah, I like to watch a lot of documentaries and just see person on person what their tics are, what triggers them, what not what is on the surface, like what is the stereotype. Yeah, and what I can because with disorders it's a lot of fun because you can create your own little ticks. You can create True, your yeah, yeah. very personalized individual characteristics where usually when you're given a character, they're told. You're told that it's this, that, and the other. That's exactly what you're playing with this. They're told you the disorder. Now you get to go and spring webs of emotions and characteristics and little little jewels and little Easter eggs for yourself yeah, yeah. that are your own. And hopefully people see them. So you don't have to indicate this is my emotion. It's like let, let, let you find out yeah. through what I'm thinking in my mind. That's a lot of fun. And did you me. discover them as you were going? Yeah, because yeah, they didn't yeah. tell me anything. Yeah, so yeah. little things come, came up. And so when I did the hoarding one, it was this and that. And then with the bipolar one, throughout him writing the play and him breaking down yeah. and like him almost driving hearses into walls. Him almost dying a couple times. Yeah. It's, he, that was fun for me to kind of build that, well, find out while the audience found out yeah. a little bit. And have like a really unique character, essentially. Yeah, that, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, no, I think you did beautifully. I love you, Eli. Oh, you thanks, I appreciate uh, it. Uh, I like that he was really sincere, and you really were rooting for him, you know, because he was really doing his best. I hope so, because I thought he was a dick, honestly. Yeah, but then so you realize times. that it's like not his fault in so many ways, exactly. you know, and he's just trying. Exactly, because well, like as actors, we can't judge our character. We have to understand it's true. Totally. Oh, that's a, without getting too thespian on it, but you have to 
you know, you, you have to give, you have to root for him at some level. Not everyone is evil. Not mm-hmm. everyone is mean. There's a good side to it. It's like Dallas's character. Yeah. Uh, Demetri Troy plays it beautifully, and his character has this bitter mask over him, like this kind of cocky, arrogant, womanizing person. But deep down, he's this very fatherly person mm-hmm. who cares. And you really see that with him and Drew. It's a, and that was one thing with Eli because of all the crazy things he was doing and malicious emotional attacks he was doing to Claire and to himself, you had to root for him. Yeah. There has to be that yeah. silver lining. Of and so I'm glad that that came across. When the whole pregnancy thing happened, I was just like, oh, you know, like, true, everyone doesn't really have a thing with Claire, I want to be <laughs> Claire, and this is like, I mean, I was upset. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, when it was like your baby, I was like, boom. Well, not your baby. Um, Eli's baby, but it's one of those things where it's like, I think, you know, a character like Eli could handle it now because he went through all those experiences, and I feel like he has, he's figured out who he is. 100%. Way more. Uh, shoot me, like, a favorite behind-the-scenes moment. You know, I wasn't there for your years, so, like, what was, like, a behind-the-scenes time, maybe with Aislinn or the cast? I feel like you and Luke probably got into some trouble. Oh, yeah, Luke, Luke, yeah, yeah. Luke, Luke pranked a little bit here and there. Luke, like, tried to scare people around corners. He would wait until you'd turn the corner and scare you. Kind of like Ellen. Yeah. Did he yell at you? <laughs> yeah, he yelled at me a couple times. A lot of it, there was also, we had a pool table in the, in the um, green room. And we used to play pool, and there's so many times where they'd be shooting, and somebody would hit the pool ball too much and like, hit a wall, and purposely hard, purposely like Raymond Black. He always had to break something and like break a clock, break a clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, <laughs> Jesus Christ. everyone knows about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He has Luke's Luke's, he's, yeah, yeah, he's slowly yeah. creeping out. <laughs> he's like slowly slipping away. Um, no, I, it, a lot of it's just it's hard to pinpoint one. It's just a lot of fun times on on set trying to pass the time sometimes. Yeah, man. If you're not working every day, you know it. It's like yeah. It's like well, there's YouTube those, videos all day exactly, long. Exactly, there's those weird days, you know, where you have the first scene at the beginning of the day and the scene at the very end of the day, and you're like, I got nothing to do other than, like, hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, with my friends, so. I can't go out and have a half new beer at yeah, the yeah. <laughs> I gotta come back. I'm stuck in this compound. What <laughs> yeah, are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely experience. Um, okay, I wanna know, I wanna see how well you know Eli. I have, a, I have an Eli trivia for you. Okay. So, Eli trivia for you, right. Monroe. What were the two plays that Eli wrote? Uh, Love Roulette and Romeo and Jules. There's, you guys are so good. When I was coming up with them, I was because I don't remember anything from my right, years, so yeah. many years of that. I'm like, oh, they're never gonna get this. You guys are killing it. Okay, uh, give me an Eli one. Let's see how well I know Eli. An Eli one? Yeah, give me an Eli trivia. Okay, what was his dead girlfriend's name? Oh my god! Do you know? What was her yeah. dead girlfriend's what's his, name? What's her name? Wait, don't say it. Adama's good. Luke yeah. knows everything, man. Luke doesn't know. Sh- Luke doesn't know. Sh- Grassy genie. What are you doing? Get in here. Um, Just in time, tell me the answer. Um, uh, you don't know. I, I do. You have oh, no, no idea. Oh, yeah. Is it like with an A, like Angie? No. Why are you whispering it to him? It was his question. Oh, I remember now. I know. It's Julia. There you go. Julia. Haunts your whispers and dreams. Damn, yeah, my God. Thanks and for I, that, and I just Give me singles over here. All righty. Whenever we're ready. I'm, I'm good. Here. You're good? Yeah. All right, Jordy. How was it coming back today and like hanging out with some of the old cast? And I think the best part is seeing the people for sure. Like seeing Aislinn and Monroe and Luke. Oh, it was the best feeling. Because like, Alicia was there too. And also, you and Luke spent so much time together on set. Mm-hmm. Brothers. Brothers. How was always. it like working with Luke? Like, oh, because he's like your older brother in that scenario. Was it like he that in is. real life too? Yeah, I mean, like we would totally like wrestle, kind of. Like I, you know, I'm doing some good like niggies or whatever those are called. Those are very uh, important. <laughs> very important. No, we definitely have like a really good like friendship. Like even today, as soon as we saw each other, like it hasn't been a while since we've seen each other, but as soon as we do, we just like reconnect so immediately, and you can still feel that family vibe. And that, like, you feel like you need that energy on set, too. Oh, absolutely. Because, like, Adam and uh, Drew felt so close. Mm. Like, I always love their brother relationship, because I, I have an older brother, and I'm like, I believe mm-hmm. this. Um, how was it, like, playing Adam and having that whole FTM storyline, naturally? Mm. Uh, did you learn stuff through that? Like, how much absolutely. did you learn through Adam's character? A lot. I mean, a lot of it was personal, too, um, just to honestly be comfortable with yourself and know who you are and that's the most important thing um and you know obviously people will and 
some people will, some people won't accept you or understand or whatever it is, um, but you have to be yourself. And I think Adam, you know, going through, um, living vicariously through him in a sense and, you know, learning that the people who do love you and who do care about you will accept regardless of the understanding and I mean personally that that helps it just it's it's comforting to know that you have those um, support those rock people that you can go to yeah and like I, I like that too right because like regardless if they understand because I think a part of it is that you have to teach your community about yourself mm -hmm. you know maybe a lot of people are, and there's this great scene between um uh, uh, Eli, Claire, and, and Adam, mm. where they have like questions. Yeah. They're like, are you maybe are you lesbian? How do you know? Maybe you're yeah. butch. Maybe you're the, you know. And, and they wanted to help. They had a, a lot mm -hmm. of questions to answer. I like that scene. Yeah, I like how Adam gets enough uh, gumption to finally tell his friends yeah. and literally speak his mind, you know, and when they do have questions, it's also part of that understanding that they're trying, and that's that's a huge step, the fact that yeah. they're they're interested, they're trying. I mean, even myself, before taking on this role, I was naive. I just didn't, I didn't know a lot. I wasn't yeah, around people. It was just totally fair, right? If yeah. you don't have any FTM friends and you're not in that specific community, How do you, you, know? would, you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. um, but learning about Adam, and I mean, now personally, I do know people that are going through similar things, so... It's nice to see it in a in the aspect of this is what I am, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna do it because I know I can. And regardless of you know whether I, I think maybe Degrassi gave a little little nudge on that. Yeah. Um, but no, it's so Degrassi great. Degrassi always gives. People, yeah, like Degrassi. <laughs> Degrassi, nu Degrassi nudged me out of the closet. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I learned so much through Adam as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I really did. And uh, so, what, you know, with all the knowledge that you gain from the show, and then you're going out into your everyday life, uh, and, and, you know, either meeting fans or just going back to school and all that thing, so, but those experiences, how, how did that feel? You know, because also you have to change your look, too. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely part of the challenging side of playing Adam, was, you know, I had short hair. Um, I was essentially seen as a guy on, yeah. on TV, so all my friends at school and stuff, because I was also in high school, well, Adam was in high school, and, um, you know, I'd have people in the hallways and stuff, like, people are going to say things, yeah. regardless of whether they like it or not, you know, they're going to have to put in their two cents. So, you know, you have people saying, like, oh, hey, dude, or whatever, and, I mean, the amount of bullying that I've had is so minute compared to what people do go through, mm -hmm. and um, if what little bit that I could show through Adam, you know, and I like to put the onus on him as opposed to myself yeah. because it is a character, right? And I'm just trying to portray it without making a mockery of it yeah. in any way. And um, I hope that maybe, like, you know, what little bit that I could have done to help somebody maybe stop struggling in a certain way or, or maybe show somebody else or help somebody to understand. And I've had a few fans, like, you know, say things that it's helped them or, like, the time that they just so happened to turn the TV on and watch my body yeah. in a cage, you know, that was the right time. They were going through something or, you know, they were bullied and, and Adam was somebody that they could relate to and see grow and build as himself and be confident in who he was. I think it's very empowering for people to see. Absolutely. And I think, you know, there was uh, so many years where people would come up to me because I was playing Margaret mm. at the time being like, you need a trans character on the show. You need a trans character right. on the show. And I, I always said, you know, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Um, and I'm really glad it did because mm. it taught me a lot. And, you know, from what you're saying, of course, and I'm, there's no surprise that so many help so many young people. Mm. What, what was your favorite girlfriend that Adam had? Because <sighs> Adam had some hot girls. <laughs> Adam got around pretty well, you know. Yeah, he definitely did. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I definitely think that Adam's end game relationship is Becky. I think him and Becky were kind of meant to be. Um, but him and Imogen had some cute moments too. They did. And they had a hot moment. Oh yeah, very hot, steamy moment. Yeah, that was um, good. Back of a car. Yes. During daytime <laughs> summer camp. In the rain. Whoa. <laughs> During camp. You're like right. all the hot, like you're supposed <laughs> to be like watching the kids. They're yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Screw this. They're just like falling into the lake. They're like, let's make out. Yeah. Oh, let's just <laughs> take our tops off and go <laughs> make out. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. But no, that was that was fun. I mean, Christine is great. Yeah. Um, 
so Sarah, like... And that was like a big step for Sarah's character, like Becky. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause yeah. like she's super, you know, Christian and happy-go-lucky and brought up very, in a, in a certain way and that way has to go. But then when it doesn't, you know, it's kind of cool to see her family and how they handle it. Well, she tried to play with all that politics, right? Like I can't mm -hmm. take you, I can't take you and to Adam and then realizes, I, no, I can't change my feelings, mm -hmm. you know, it's not working with all this politics, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Was I love the relationship. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I was just a big Adam fan. Oh. Okay, let's see how well of an Adam, how well we know Adam, okay? We have an oh, Adam God. trivia. Oh, no. Um, all right, so what was the radio show that Adam hosted with <laughs> Dave Turner? What was it called? Mano a Mano. Killed it! Yes! Ding, ding, ding. Oh, oh man, do we have a harder one? Do you got a harder one for me, Krista? Maybe I'll think of one that you guys can't. Oh, yeah, okay. that's good. Should we, should you guys both think trivia. too, because I don't know if should I'm going to... Adam Trivia. Um, Adam Trivia. Is what was hard? his favorite kind of t-shirt? Oh. Plaid! <laughs> Everything he wore was, was, it was plaid! plaid. Everything like I'd honestly go for fitting. It would just be like five plaid shirts lined flannel, up, and then like flannel, one pair of jeans. Flannel, yeah. flannel, flannel, flannel plaid. plaid. Well, he's Canadian. Okay. A very we like Canadian. Our <laughs> um, one last question though, because I'm curious, how was the fan response about, of course, like Adam's tragic ending? Mm. I mean, like, how was that for you? With people tweeting at you, asking you questions? Did they feel angry? Like, yeah, mixed, mixed response. I mean, it's it was mostly the shock of it too, yeah. like. It happened so, so suddenly yeah. that people didn't believe it. Like, when, wait, wh when's Adam going to be back kind of thing? Like, what's happening? And then, you know, of course, it was, well, why would you leave? Like, oh, what are you, pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my I, God. I heard Is that what they everything. Thought? I heard that I was, like, <laughs> pregnant and that I had moved to, like, some far-off place. I don't know. I heard a bunch of, like, things online, but... Um, no, the, the truth is that, you know, it's a good storyline that, that course, yeah. needs to be told. It's the number one cause of teen accidents. Well, you know, for a message like that to actually land, I always yes. find that, and I found that with Cam's mm -hmm. character as well, right? It's like, you have to care about that character. You have to like, bond Like, we couldn't them, just bring yeah. in, like, you know, uh, you know, a really small supporting yeah, right, and then right. take them out because we wouldn't feel that impact, you mm -hmm. know? And it's hard that you got to sacrifice the characters you love to put that message across, yeah. you know? I love Adam. He'll always be part of my life in a sense. I mean, I've learned so much from him that, I mean, that's that's an experience you won't you won't forget. So. And uh, at least you don't have to wear the flannel anymore. That's okay. <laughs> or the or the binder. The yeah, the binder. <laughs> that was not fun either. What, what, what interesting experiences. That's wicked. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Cool, that was thank wicked. You. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, okay, go for it. Uh, yeah. Actually, we are uh, nice. Where is this going? <laughs> okay, I'm rolling. Luke Billick. That's your name, right? Oh, yes, sir. All right, cool. Are you just studying it? Don't forget. No, no, I know your name. Right. And uh, what's your character's name? Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Like big Jeff. fan of Jeff <laughs> Torres. <laughs> and Jeff Torres is the man. <laughs>I played Drew Torres. Awesome. Andrew for those super fans. So here's my. Is that really what it was his full name? You know what, man? I found that out season f like four. Andrew yeah. Torres? Andrew Torres. Yeah. You know, you kind of were like killing people in alleyways. Yeah. And then like, you know, I, going I, to boiler room, yes, getting I, ladies preggers. I did basically everything that a good Degrassi character should do. That's how I, I think. Yeah. Right? That's how I feel. Yeah. All right. So who was your favorite, though, out of all the, all the Drew girlfriends? Mm -hmm. Who was your fave? Um, and that could be like, who was your fave to hang out on set, or who do you yeah. think like the character? Could be anything. Uh, you know what? I had fun hanging out with everyone. Um, That's nice. <laughs> I hate everyone. <laughs> um, I don't know. Me and, me and Alicia just really, really got along. Yeah, Bianca was hot. Kissing her was not a horrible day on yeah. set. Yeah. Ever. Those yeah. were pretty good days. Yeah, you get to set, you just click with yeah, yeah. the same person. You yeah, get yeah. it. Like, we have to be boyfriend and girlfriend. I gotta kiss you. Have I wanted to kiss you since I met you from day one? Yes. <laughs> so it's all my dreams are coming true. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who's like, who's your buddies on set? Um, you know what? I, I, like Monroe, we still play hockey together. I was pretty lucky. We like, because Monroe, Justin and Demo, 
they were on the latest buds together before they, they did Degrassi, right? Demo, DeMarco? Uh, Demetrius. Demetrius. DeMarco. That's another Isn't that your last name? No. No. That was kind of my character's name. Oh, so yeah. DeMarco was my last. It's kind of like Marco. But you, you know, you were close. I was close. 14% yeah. for trying. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing about Drew. I realized Drew's like a really good guy, mm -hmm. but like he's a disaster. Yeah, yeah. Like he just never <laughs> did anything right. Ever. Like did you read like scripts and just get so frustrated? Dude, all, all the time. Um, and I think that was one of the, the things that I almost had to deal with is that no matter what situation they they put me in, I'd have to bounce back and make another mistake oh, so the next true. episode, you know? But it, it was fun, you know, give me the opportunity to constantly continue making mistakes. And when you're, when you're on set filming that, like that's, that's the goal, you know what I mean? Like that's what you want. And also I realized that Drew is often like doing like things shirtless. Like he's like shooting with, like <laughs> not shooting, um, uh, fighting without a shirt. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I jump into to like a pool, you jump into a wall without a shirt. Yeah, yeah. I was shirtless for yeah. about like. Were you okay with that? Twenty-seven percent of the episodes. Yeah. You know what? It wasn't my first. I think it was my first week on set. They ended up tying me to a flagpole in my boxers. Oh yeah. Um, so I think Initiation. after that, there's nothing really that can embarrass you. Uh, we were just talking here with Jordy. I love Jordy, and she's. Uh, of course, telling us all about Adam, and I'm, I'm a big Adam fan, you know, I played a gay character, mm -hmm. and I just, but I learned so much through Adam, because like, I didn't know too much about right, the, the trans experience, world. right? right. Um, how was it with you, you know, being a part of that storyline? Yeah, you know what, um, I think the best way for me to kind of look at it when I was going through it was that she wasn't a transgender, she was actually a boy, or he, Adam was a, a boy to me. The, the character Gracie never even existed in my head. Um, and there was times where we would be filming and I'd be, be punching Jordy and she'd be like, I'm a girl, you <laughs> can't do that. I'm like, honestly, I'm so sorry, I just, I forget. And she played it so well too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, that, the thought of, of Jordy like, playing the character never even occurred to me. It just, she was always in character 24 seven that it was it made my job super easy. It wasn't acting. Yeah. And, you know, and she didn't necessarily talk like this, you know, she didn't talk super high pitched voice, she just talked normally. Um, and this one scene we're doing, she's like, must be really mad at me. She's like, Drew, I don't understand. You're being dumb. You're doing this. You're doing that. And all of a sudden, a spider like crawls across the table, and she was like, You're doing. Ah! And I was like, Yo, where did that voice come from? Oh yeah, you're a girl. Oh my god. Everyone was like, Still scared of a spider. Yeah, still so afraid of a spider. And I think that just, <laughs> it, it, it just shows a testament to how truly talented she is yeah. when you see her break character. And she's just the biggest girly girl ever. I think you have man crushes in real life. Multiple man crushes. Okay, what does that yeah. entail? Okay, what does that, <laughs> that entail? Yeah, is that like um, actors, like actors that were previously, you know, on Degrassi? <laughs> <laughs> um, besides you, <laughs> thank my you. dominant love for you. Every time I see you at thank the gym, you. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I got a super, super, super just. <laughs> now I'm gonna back up. So I think I was gonna say something way worse than I was going to. Now I got a, a really big like professional crush on Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, no, I just, I've been watching him since I was a kid, and I don't know, somebody asked, we were doing one of our press junkets somewhere, and they were like, uh, who would you, if you could kiss anyone on the mouth, who would it be? Everyone gives their like basic answers, I'm like, Leo, <laughs> drop the mic, walk away. What room? Boiler room. Damn! <laughs> How do I phrase this? So you know when Bianca comes back over Thanksgiving mm -hmm. to, you know. Turkey dump me? I'm you, sharp like a whip. You are brilliant. You are brilliant. Feel it. It's okay. the couch. I am Ask floored. a Dom Audrey question. Okay, okay. Um, He's pretty good at the new season. Yeah, okay, okay. at the new seasons. Because um, you came in and... and like, okay. Oh, this shit. isn't necessarily a Drew question, but... Who was I with when Jenna was get it, giving birth? When Jenna was giving birth, you were with somebody. Like, in the room, when yes. she was, like, holding the baby. I read this. I didn't see it. I read it. So I'm trying to look at the. the, the, the There's one character in there you'd never guess that she's there. I know. You know? Yeah, yeah she does. Like, <laughs> it wouldn't be Allie because I would guess no. that. Obviously not Casey. Was with the boys like Dave and all of them. Oh, Casey was there. Yeah. Yeah, but like he was hanging out with Dave and them. So I'm just trying to place you in that episode. Where were you? We were all together. Me, yeah. Casey, Dave. We leave his house, and she says. Claire, Jenna's water broke. Yeah. And we get a drive by who? By who? Hmm? 
Mm -mm. I didn't even read here. No, yeah, you didn't even see that. Did you say Shantae? No. No. Oh, then yes. (laughs) All right, awesome, man. Thanks for your time, brother. Thank you very much. Nice. I love it. What did he say? Can we do more of this? It's totally right in here. Love. All righty. I'm rolling. Are ready? Yep. Let me move my water. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. How's it feel like? I mean, you've, it's been a while since you've seen everybody and came yeah. back, and now you're just going to so hang out. So exciting. Like, amazing. I haven't seen any everyone in, like, a year, two years, so it's just, like, really fun to be back. I know. I'm like, yeah. I'm like seeing crazy. Luke. Luke. So you guys spend so much time. He was just here, and he said such lovely things about you. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Luke's, like, my baby. Like, I think, feel like we're actually going to get married in real life. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. So, like, I just need to give him a couple more years, and then we're gonna be. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's totally. the appropriate thing. Let yeah. him just get a bit older. Yeah. yeah. A couple more years, and then hey, we're gonna. Well, get because it. I really yeah. love Drew and Bianca's relationship. I mean, they went through some serious stuff. Crazy. Like nuts. Insane. Like people are getting shot, and yeah. you know, Wait. gangsters are chasing you, and all of these things. But mm-hmm. you know, I look at the relationship, and it kind of describe it to me. How do you think, was it because your guys' chemistry on set, you think, and the writers started working, well, like writing more? I think, okay, because in the beginning, the reason why they got together was because Drew was being judged all the time, you know, by all these different groups of friends. And then he found Bianca, and Bianca was the first person who didn't judge him, you yeah. know? And I think he liked that, and he was like, wow, this is kind of refreshing. And, I mean, he didn't obviously judge her. Oh, well, he kind of did in the beginning, but then he kind of let it go when he realized that Bianca didn't judge yeah. him. And so, and then they got together, and I think that's when the writers saw the chemistry, because we did break up. Yeah. After we got together right in the beginning, we did break up, and then we got back together pretty yeah, quickly. because then, like, Drew went to Allie for a bit. Yeah, for then, a bit, and, like, it yeah. was just, like, not working out. And then out. went to Katie, but then came back to Bianca. Totally, like, Bianca's like, always it was there. All, Bianca's always there. And Bianca didn't have any other relationships. Like, it was always Drew. She, like, yeah, Bianca right. only had... So what do you Drew. think it was? Because like Bianca was the bad girl, right? You know she was the bad girl, yeah. and then here could, was it because she was a bit innocent? But you, you know what I mean? I think so. Because you like taught him about the boiler room and totally. all that kind of stuff. It well, was not something you, new for her because I feel like she dated. She's only known these bad boys her whole entire life. Yeah. You know she grew up in the wrong crowd. She she kind of had to fend for herself. So I think that when she met Drew, it's like this was something new and refreshing, and he was so innocent. Yeah. And I think she really really liked him. And I mean, God, he's gorgeous so like <laughs> right so, I think so like, like having kissing scenes okay. was not hard it was not hard <laughs> i was a big fan of bianca because she started pretty much a mess you know it didn't seem like she was right. trying and it's almost like she was trying to find more trouble to push the world away totally she, and then there was something some switch in her right you and know? i think that was that was drew yeah and then his family came in and yep. roger was a big help and yeah so like what to you what was her her, her arc ass? yeah well yeah like you know, like we were saying, I think Bianca was completely misgen- misunderstood from the beginning. You know, she she comes from a really horrible upbringing. I think she's had to fend for herself. She doesn't she didn't have parents, and so you know she got involved in the wrong things. You know, the drugs and all that stuff. And then when she met Drew, um, I think that's when she realized what love was. I don't think she's ever had that in her life, and so. When, and then you know when her when his mom brought him in, that was just such an amazing turning point in yeah. her life, you know. And I think that's what kind of changed Bianca as a person. Yeah, she felt like she had family. Yeah, she felt like she had someone, mm-hmm. which was you know it's, it's crazy. Like I mean, I don't know I don't know how to relate to that, yeah. like me personally, because it's just like I've had love, you know, my whole life. But then when I was playing Bianca and had to adapt into that character, I was like. It was, you know, so sad, and like mm-hmm. she was so lonely. And then when yeah. she met Drew, you know, and she had this this love, and her and her, yeah, her whole his whole family took her in. Right? I got a little info from a, you know, a little birdie somewhere that you and uh, you you and Luke kind of got into some trouble offset. Do you have like behind the scenes <laughs> trouble? <laughs> you can say it now. What do you mean? I don't know what shenanigans were you guys up to offset. Offset, like. Oh, God. This might have been just this might have been just Luke getting into trouble. <laughs> I don't know if it included you. Now that I think of it, did he mention something um, about a clock? No, that was just Luke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she remembers. Like on set, but not when. <laughs> yeah, 
Behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. We're not going there. Tell me if you're... No, no, no. Luke, yeah, me and Luke were just... We were troublemakers sometimes on... Well, uh, your characters so... kind of started to get into you. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. is there like a good behind the scenes memory? Um, honestly, like I just... I miss us all being together on set. You know, or well, yeah, on set, but like when we were not shooting um, in between takes, we just had so much fun because we're all like a family, you know? And so I remember like one of, we created this, um, this Italian mafia family. It was called the Palumbos. Palumbos? All right. Okay. I, I think I know them. Yeah. <laughs> it was called the Palumbos. It was me, Luke, Monroe, Justin, and Daniel. And yeah, we were called the Palumbos. So like in between takes, we would snap out of our Degrassi characters and go into the our Italian into mafia characters. Yeah. yeah, it was like this was going on for a good three to four months. Like Amazing. it was just like every day on set, so much fun. Yeah, the good old Palumbos. The good old Palumbos, and I wish that we'd be we great could, to like, go to their house for you know Easter yeah. lunch. Nice. It got loud, like it got rowdy. I mean, it was crazy. Well, you know, I mean, I remember that too. It's just there's something about the compound of Degrassi. Yeah. It's like this like little tiny world yeah. that we all lived in. And I mean, for me, it kind of felt like summer camp. And That's like, what it is. And it was yeah. just like ours, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, you know, just we all just became kind of fam it, it's funny you become like a family yeah and like a family you love each other but then you piss each other off totally you know and yeah, then yeah, you're yeah, kind yeah. of in little fights but then you're yeah. like oh you get back yeah, you know like, you're whatever. like it's fine okay, whatever cool. let's go yeah now. yeah you know <laughs> totally and then all the yeah. years go by and you're like oh god you grew yeah you're great. <laughs> and it's like right back to where you left off totally. right like totally. it's crazy yeah that's how I feel like today. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah special experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. so we got some Bianca trivia. We asked this one to Luke, and apparently Luke is a Chagrassi trivia master. No. We didn't expect it to be him no. to be that good, so we couldn't stump him, but we'll try here. Wow, okay, so God, I'm not gonna... Bianca, Bianca goes away to university, and she mm -hmm. comes back mm -hmm. to break up with Drew over mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. What's that called? Turkey dump. Good one. Right? She killed it. Right? Am I right? Yes. Woo! We, you know, we realized they're so good at this trivia that we we, we should have come up with many more. <laughs> you, we had very low expectations for Cass's memory of these episodes. I think it was basing it off my Especially memory. Especially for me and Luke. <laughs> I think it was basing it off my memory because I feel like I don't remember anything. All right, shoot me a Bianca trivia. Let's see how good I am. Okay. You shoot me one. Oh, I shoot you one. Oh my gosh. Anything? Yeah, shoot me a Bianca trivia and see. Oh yeah, because you know Bianca. See how okay, I so yeah. Yeah, because I'm like a huge fan. Bianca, I just need to get this off my chest. Bianca yeah. was the girl I wanted to be in high school. I love you. But I just couldn't be because, well, for many reasons. But, <laughs> but if I could have been, I would have been. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I've, I've studied her very hard. I love you. Oh my god. So shoot amazing. me a Trivenzio while I know her. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, what? What did Ali? Call Bianca. Um, like she call, she had like a nickname for Bianca in season ten. Yeah. It was kind of like a rude nickname. It yeah, was something I know, that. I know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's, oh no, you had one for her. Something something Bendari. Yeah, and she had something for Bianca, and it kind of it got brought up a couple times oh, throughout. That's a good throughout, one. Yeah, that's a good know, one, right? I can hear. Bianca say something like boy some like boy bitch bindari or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um and this name like stuck with Bianca throughout the four seasons. What did she say to Bianca? Do you know what I'm talking about? Boiler room Bianca. <laughs> that killed it. The one. Echo. <laughs> Boiler room Bianca. Again, why I wanted to be Bianca in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Well, it's been so great to have you back and to hang out and, you know, see you guys and, you know, because I was in the older years, so I've only started to really get to hang out and know you guys, so it's been yeah. awesome. I know, I wish you were part of our... I know, group. maybe we have to have like a big reunion. I think so. Listen, enough years are gonna go by and we're all gonna find ourselves at like a Degrassi old age home. Totally, no, that's... Yeah, Bianca's gonna have a guy to be in somewhere. And her... <laughs> it's gonna be in North York. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be no all our <laughs> no man's head. We'll be like all our characters, just older. Totally, totally. Like, just wheeling ourselves in. Um, great to see you, love. Thanks for hanging out. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.